Now, whether, whatever your religious persuasion might be, and whatever mine might be, let me just tell it to you straight. It's really irrelevant. People want to fuss about religion. It's really irrelevant. Because we have no power. Only the gods have power. So let the gods fight it out. People say, well, respect my opinion. Why? Really? What does respect do for your opinion? Makes you feel better? Are you going to walk different? Are you going to smile better? These ideologies that we've adapted are nothing short of an exercise in mayhem. They're distractions. It's the wrong narrative. Because we are doing nothing but exposing how immature we are as a people. We say, respect me. And I say, why? Why? What if I didn't respect you? Does that change how you feel about yourself? And now we have huge movements centered around blank life matters. What it's really saying is, respect me. Respect me. No one can give you the respect you deserve but yourself. No one can respect you but you. And what does it matter if someone doesn't respect you? Because if you can love yourself, that's the only love that matters. Because until I love myself, I can't love you anyway. So, so why should I respect you when you don't respect yourself? In fact, if I did respect you, really respect you, deep down inside, you wouldn't like it anyway. You wouldn't believe I'm respecting you. <laughs> you say, no, you don't say that. You don't mean that. So we go from one extreme to the other. What I'm telling you right now is the core reason of why our nation is in trouble. We think it's going to be another political superman or superwoman who comes sweeping down and saves America. Or the party's going to finally get it right and now we can go on to utopia and our taxes, are going to, we're going to get out of debt and we're going, to, we're going to tell China we got out of debt from you. All of a sudden everything's just going to turn out just right. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In the earth as it is in heaven. God's kingdom is involved with this earth. <coughs> It's involved with this earth. When you take a look at all that's taking place, what's more impactful than the Republicans, than the Democrat, than CNN News, than Fox News, and all the other ideas and opinions and narratives is the fact that we see things happening from a prophetic, biblical level. You cannot shake this off. There's a bigger picture to be focused on. And how do we live that out within society? How do we live that out within the realms of politics? How do we live that out with our neighbors? We live it out by embracing the transition God's called us to. And how do we find it out? Though? How do we know what's my transition? How can I figure it out? <clears throat> the number one question that frustrates us is, who am I? Why am I here? What, what, am, what am I doing and why am I doing it? What's my why? What's my passion? And it becomes frustrating because we are multi-talented. We are, can multitask. We have everything that's smart, but we ourselves. We have the smartphone. We have the tablets. We have, now they're advertising the little intelligent technology now that will talk to you, you know. Can you tell me the news today? Now the, now, now the machine is talking to the dog. <laughs> it's, it's, it's going from one level to the other. I want you to take a moment and think about your life. Think about where you are 
Where do you see yourself? Let's just say, where do you see yourself? It's not a matter of six months or two years or five years, but where do you see yourself? We're, we're all working. Some of us want to work, some of us not working. When you finish working and you, and you park the car in the garage and you, and you go inside the house and you put something in your face to eat and, and you finally sit down for a minute and you breathe, when was the last time that you just said, Father, what have you put me here for? Why am I here? To just exchange currency from one hand to the other? Just to exchange hugs from one person to the other? Why am I here? Transitions. And a lot of times, where we are in life, is a transition of bringing us closer to where God has called us. We're always in a transition. And the thing about transition is doesn't, hello, my name is Transition. <laughs> I'm here to pick you up. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. Every time you wake up, you're in a transition. Now, whether you know it or not, it doesn't need your consent to be in a transition. It's not, you were born, you entered into a transition. When you were born, if you're breathing right now, you're in a transition. The question is, will you go by will or will you go by the force of society? That's the question. Kevin, you're standing on there looking at me. What's that mean? We're in a transition. We're in a transition. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I was going to transition to the transition. When I'm in a transition, I just like to know what's up. <laughs> I'm not going to guess about it. I'm going to just straight out um, ask. I want to encourage you, Casper, as you put your heart into what God has called you to. First of all, I want to say I'm proud of you for taking up the challenge. Again, so many times um, we do not take up the challenge because for some reason we believe it's not necessary. The transition you're embracing it's preparing you for greater works ahead. You can't skip. If you don't do the hard left, you'll never grow. Give up the easy right. Take on the hard left. Develop the tenacity and the muscles and the resilience that you need in order to win. I want to close with a poem that God gave me about a week ago. It's not in my latest book, which is called Naked Before God, Words That Express My Heart. 44 poems, 8 commissioned illustrations. I do have a few books over there for those who would like to copy. Um, and this is the book that I'll be doing a play on, Bastards in the Poor Pit. Did I spell Bastards right? Yeah. It looks pretty good today. <laughs> it's based on Hebrews 12 and 8, and it deals with those who preach the gospel for the sake of personal pain. And Hebrews says, if you be without chastisement, you be bastards in God's sons. So to my brother Casper, I want to encourage you with this poem called Transitions. Transitions. Transitions are motions, not always smooth. Activities that break the rules. Teaching me a lesson I was not looking to learn. Transitions are hard, lonely, and sometimes stern. They grab me like hook and fish mouth, reeling me out of water into a drought. Atmospheric change, people who seem strange, out of my familiar place. Transitions make me alone. Transitions are God unseen expressions by your eyes, manifested directions not familiar to your mind. Profound revelations being born from deep within your core. Transitions are taking you to a place you've never been before. Transitions are catastrophic interruptions of what's normal. Not asking permissions, yielding to your feelings, the will of other people, never considering. Transitions is 
God's kingdom revealing, revealing himself, revealing his real, revealing the you to you beyond what you feel, who you know, where you are, what you believe, and even beyond what others think they see. Transitions is a journey quickened by desperate prayer, obedient heart, a deep desire of wanting God, and dropping down to the ground of surrendered will, loving your enemies, forgiving those who do you ill. Transition is taking you to a new place of grace, a new expression of heaven on earth through your being, fulfilled prayers of what you've been believing for. Hold on with fierce, fearless faith. Don't give up to the turbulence that's necessary to bring you from where you are to where he's calling you to be. Face your transitions. Embrace the journey. Expect rejection. Keep hold of your affection. Possess your soul. A new story is about to unfold. Such transitions will beautify your life. Bring new friends. Reveal new lights of sunshine. Reveal brighter moonlights to hold the stars to shine more bright. Miss not your transitions. It is God's kingdom bringing you to where he's calling you before the foundations of the world to be. He is with you. He will never leave you. He's closest to you in the middle of transitions world. You've been called. You've been chosen to be positioned. And he will get you there through prophetic transitions. God bless you. Now it is time to transition.